Hello everybody. Well, I'm trying something a little bit newer today. Um, well, I guess really I'm filming these all on the same day because uh, this weekend has been quite busy for me because I'm trying to stay ahead with this uh, Halloween movie series because I know I have a couple busy weekends coming up ahead of me. Um, so I'm trying something new with the lighting. I know the light's still kind of in the picture and I've tried angling my iPad a little bit better. I'm going to go get a new iPad here uh, in the future soon. I do have a list to make... Uh, a list of things that are going to make everything better for me over the next four months for uh, doing this this uh, content right now. I'm just kind of dealing with what I've got. Um, anyway, for today we are going to be doing the review of Halloween H2O. So I do have I do have notes like I always take my notes to do my analysis of the movie first. Um, so this movie starts out with Mr. Sandman playing. We are now in Langdon, Illinois. It's October 29th, 1998. So 20 years after the first incident, just in case the H2O didn't give it away. The, the title of the movie didn't give it away, that it was 20 years later. Um, so it starts off with this woman finding her porch lamp broken. Uh, the house is silent, so she runs to the neighbor's house. There's no answer. She hears a noise. She's startled by Jimmy and his friend. Uh, Jimmy enters the woman's home. Door closes slowly behind him. The office is the only room that was touched. Uh, Jimmy t then tells the woman that everything is clear. He's checked the house completely. Um, the woman goes back into the house, tries to flick the light. There's no power. There's a picture of Dr. Loomis in her office. So n now we know probably why the room's been ransacked. Um, and just that room has been touched. Um, front door opens, she goes to close it, uh, Michael appears behind her, the back door is open, now the woman knows what's going on, so she runs, uh, she finds, she runs back to the next, the house beside her, she finds Jimmy and his friend dead, um, Michael finds a knife and kills the woman as the cops enter her home, because I guess she must have somehow alerted them. And it turns out that that woman was Marion from the uh, the doctor or the nurse that was with Dr. Loomis from the first and second movies. Um, so Michael escapes. He's able to drive away. Um, the cops the next day find a shrine basically of Michael Myers. So like a shrine kind of like a map of everything that's been happening with Michael over the past 20 years in Marion's home. Um, then it goes to this camera moving around this big house. Um, the clock strikes 12. The calendar moves to October 31st, so it's now Halloween. The closet door opens. It flashes to a scene from the first movie of Lori in the closet with Michael trying to break in. Um, the picture on the desk uh, then it goes back to the desk. The picture on the desk has Michael's knife in it. And uh, Lori Strode is written on the chalkboard. And then Lori wakes up screaming. Her son runs into the room. Shakes her awake. Uh, goes to get Lori's medication. Uh, and then it says again, October 31st. Um, Halloween. We're at the summer... Or, sorry... We're in Summer Glen, California, but we're at the Hillcrest Academy High School. Uh, John is Lori's son. Um, so Lori and John are having an argument about him going to Yosemite, which is a campsite. Uh, it appears that Lori is very overprotective. Um, and probably for good reason, I guess, because of what happened to her, so she's going to have that protective nature. Um, Lori sees... Michael in the reflection of the window. She closes her eyes. He disappears. Um, then we go to Highway 139 in California. A uh, car pulls into a rest area. Mother and daughter get out of the car. Michael's vehicle is already there, so the one that he stole from Marion's house. It's parked outside. Uh, the door to the girls' bathroom is locked. The mother looks back at the car, kind of concerned. There's no power to the bathroom, the men's bathroom. They go in anyway. Um, the woman puts a rock against the door. She goes into the stall beside her daughter. The door shuts. 
Um, Michael then walks up to her stall, grabs her purse. The woman peers through the door. She sees Michael. He looks back at her, and then Michael leaves. Um, turns out Lori has changed her last name to Tate, obviously to pr protect her identity, or at least that's what I got out of it. I, I originally thought the security's game, the security guard's name was Roger. Turns out it was Ronnie. I find that out a little bit later. Anyway, so Ronnie is the security guard. Um, he lets John and his buddy out, even though he's not supposed to, because um, Lori doesn't want them to leave the campus at any time, especially John. Um, so then we go to Lori. She's out in the town. Michael's car passes Lori down the street. That's the first time I think I've ever noticed that in this movie. Um, she sees his, sees the reflection of Michael in the store window. She's then startled by her boyfriend, who's a counselor. Lori says she's tried everything to help her deal with what happened in her past, but nothing helps. Um, she might have a possible drinking problem because she asks for another mimosa at the at the. Uh, lunch place she's at. Uh, Lori finds John and Charlie. Charlie is his friend's name off campus. Lori and John then have another argument. Um, Lori gets into the car. Mr. Sandman starts playing. She pulls away. Michael's car is right across the street so it kind of sets the mood for that scene. Um, Lori pulls up to the gate, calls for Ronnie. Michael has followed them. He then pulls away in his car as they pull into the gate. Uh, John's girlfriend sees Michael outside of the campus. Uh, John's girlfriend's name is Molly. Um, Lori then allows John to go to Yosemite. Uh, the bus is headed for Yosemite past Michael's car on the road. Uh, Michael's car then pulls up to the gate. Ronnie opens the gate. Michael walks right behind him, so now we know Michael is inside of the campus. Uh, Lori hears the noise as she is leaving. Lori sees Michael. She closes her thought. She closes her eyes once, opens them. He's not disappearing. She closes them again, opens them. Her boyfriend's right in front of her. Uh, then Lori's boyfriend sees Michael, so now we know that he's actually there. <laughs> um. Turns out that Sarah, Molly, John, and Charlie didn't go to Yosemite. They're still on campus hiding. Uh, John hears something before he crawls through the window. Uh, Lori tells her boyfriend about who she really is. He turns out he's heard the story of Michael Myers. Uh, Lori tries to then call for John um, because there's no dial tone. She sees. She's telling him the story about how old she was when Michael attacked her. She was 17. Her son's turning 17 now. So she starts to panic. Uh, she finds all of John's camp supplies in his room, so now she knows that John hasn't gone to Yosemite. Uh, Ronnie tells her about the strange car parked at the gate, so then she starts to panic even more. She says she's going to find John. Uh, then we go back to Sarah, Molly, John, and Charlie. Charlie comes face to face with Michael after going back to get the alcohol. Sarah's searching for Charlie. The power flickers. Uh, Michael walks by the door. She goes to get out of it. She can't. She then goes back and finds Charlie dead. Um, Michael then chases Sarah. She is able to get in the dumbwaiter but she gets stabbed in the leg. Uh, John and Molly hear the dumbwaiter fall. Sarah tries to crawl away from Michael, and Michael just stabs her repeatedly until she's dead. Um, then John and Molly are following the trail of blood. They find Sarah dead. She's hanging in like the pantry closet, I guess, or storage closet for all the food. Um, Michael now chases John and Molly. Michael grabs Molly. John tries to fight him off. Uh, he gets stabbed in the process. Uh, Molly hits Michael over the head with a rock. John and Molly flee. Uh, Michael then keeps pursuing them. Uh, they end up 
uh, getting back to Lori. Um, Michael and Lori then lock eyes whether right she's able to close the door on them. Uh, Lori hides John and Molly. Um, Lori's boyfriend then shoots Ronnie as he comes out of nowhere thinking that it's Michael. Michael then comes from the next room, stabs Will. Of course his name was Will. <laughs> That's Lori's boyfriend's name. Um, Lori runs, grabs John and Molly, is able to start the car just as Michael's about to grab her. Um, Lori then opens the gate to the campus, tells Molly and John to go, call for the police and an ambulance. She goes back to fight Michael. Um, Michael is in the building. He, like, is hanging from the ceiling. He slowly drops down from the ceiling behind her. Uh, Lori hits him with an axe that sticks in him. Uh, Michael stabs Lori. The chase begins. She's hiding under the tables. Um, Michael tries to stab at her a few times, but she just keeps rolling under the tables. He can't figure out which table she's under, so he eventually just starts flipping them all. Uh, then the chase continues. Uh, or sorry, then she, this is sorry, in the same room, she's, uh, Lori stabs Michael with a flagpole. Doesn't really do anything to him, he just breaks it. So she throws that, the rest of the flagpole at him. The chase continues. Lori's throwing knives at him in the kitchen. Uh, the fight kind of ensues. She grabs two kitchen knives, goes and hides. Uh, jumps out at Michael, stabs him over and over again. He falls from the second floor uh, right through a table. She then approaches him, pulls the knife out of him. Um, goes to stab him one last time. And somehow Ronnie's still alive. He grabs her and says, he's dead, he's dead. There's no reason to continue. Then it, it goes to the next shot. Michael's being put into a body bag. Lori then points a gun at the car that he's being loaded into. Says, put him in there. She steals the car. Drives it down the road. Uh, she can see Michael's breaking free from the body bag behind her. He lunges at Lori. Lori hits the brakes. Launches Michael right through the windshield. He rolls on the ground. He then gets up. Lori hits him with the car. Drives down the... Hits him. Drives down the street with him on the hood. Rolls the car off of a cliff hill. Cliff hill type thing, basically. It's more of a cliff than a hill, really. The car rolls. Lori's launched from the car. Um, Michael is farther down the hill as the car rolls towards him. He tries to get away, but the car hits him, pins him um, to a tree. Lori then gets up, picks up the axe. She walks over to Michael. Uh, he reaches out his hand. She goes to reach out her hand and then she kind of smiles and all of a sudden she just takes the axe and swings it, chops off his head completely. And then the credits roll. And I thought there, were, I thought there was something after the credits in this movie, but it turns out that there wasn't. So I would give this movie an 8 out of 10, because I preferably like the Laurie Strode storyline a lot more, so I'm glad that um, these movies basically came back around full circle to continue the Laurie Strode story, which is nice. I believe that even in the next movie it continues, and if you've seen the newer one, you know that they continue the story even further, even though they kind of change it up, change it up a bit. But anyhow, um, I would say that this movie went back more to the iconic mask, I guess you could say, as opposed to the one they used in the four, five, and s four, five, and the Curse of Michael Myers. I guess this mask kind of reminded me a little bit more of the mask that from the first and second. I know it seems weird, but there were small changes to it in the other movies that I just... It wasn't as... Um, the character, it almost felt like he was changing a little bit, but I feel like this character... Um, it's, almost like, it's almost like there's two different storylines going on, really. Um, but I feel like we connect with this Michael Myers a little bit more because it's going back more to towards the original story that we had 
Um, I feel like they tried to kind of take away from that a little bit, so I'm glad that Jamie Lee Curtis decided to return for these movies, because I just, she, she made the, she made the Michael Myers character what it was today, really, so without her, there wouldn't be, um, this iconic series of movies, really, and, uh, Donald Pleasance as well, who was a big part of the, uh, franchise. Unfortunately, he passed away in 1995, so this movie was also commemorated to him as well as number five, I do believe. No, sorry. Sorry, it was the Curse of Michael Myers that was commemorated to him, right? Yes, I believe so, because that was the one that I thought Winona Ryder was in for some reason. Anyway, I'm kind of rambling on. I believe I gave my rating already for this movie. And I think that is about all I have to say. Because I don't want to I don't want to make these videos too long. Anyway, if this review wasn't as good as some of the other ones, I'm sorry. I'm just because I've, I'm extremely tired right now. I've been up all weekend grinding to try to get uh, ahead a little bit with these so I can uh, get back to what I had promised earlier in the year with my Star Wars movies. They are coming. I do promise that. And uh, right now I'm continuing the Big Bang Theory series to try to stay ahead of that. Um, I'll have to eventually go out and buy a couple more of the seasons because I only have up to season 9 right now. So I'll have to buy... Unless I have it on my shelf over there and I just don't know it. Because it's probably in the back if it is. Um, but I'll take a look. I, I think I already took a look and I didn't have it. So I'll have to go out and buy season 10, 11, and 12. Um, just because I like to have the physical copies of seasons that I almost have the complete collections of. So I will do that in the future. I do have my next like 25 weeks planned out now. So lots of content will still be coming. Uh... Also, I have a second channel. Unfortunately, um, due to obviously 2020 being what it was, um, I wasn't able to do uh, what I wanted to do with that channel, so I'll give a little update on that channel as well in the near future. And I think that's it for this one. I will see you guys in the next video. Like, share, and subscribe. Bye-bye for now.